Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with letslearnthistogether.com. And what I want to show you in this video is a very quick and fast way to get up and running with some basic tile collisions. I'm going to be doing a more in-depth video on it on Friday, but if you want to just see the three critical functions you need to get started, then this is going to be it. I'm going to try and make it as quick as I can because most of the tutorials are super long. But before we get started, I just want to say if you hit the like button and leave a comment, I'm going to be doing weekly drawings on each of my videos that come out for my beginner game development course valued at 29 bucks. I'll give you a coupon if you win and you can use it or give it to a friend who might want to start game development. With all that out of the way though, let's go ahead and I'll show you what we're going to be doing. So I've got a project here that works and this is all based on tile collisions right here. I have no solid objects or anything and I can come in here and choose any of the tiles that I have and put them into my game and they are now collidable because this whole tile set is actually collidable. Nothing extra has to be done. It all just works exactly as it should, which is really, really cool and makes prototyping and getting your game up and running really fast. So I've got a project here that you can quickly follow along with. I just have a sprite, which is a tile set, and it's the exact same one that I've got right there. I have a room where I just have my object mouse inside of here, and all I'm gonna do in that is just move around and show you that our tile collisions are actually working. So first, let's add in a tile set. Now, remember what you name it, because you're gonna actually need to type in this name as a string. So I'm gonna choose ours, come in here, and the other thing to remember is that if you select any dead space and put it in here, that will count as a collision. So when you're doing tiles, just make sure that you do not choose dead space unless you really want to confuse the player. So we come in here, lay out a couple of these, and I can choose any of them that I want. It does not matter. And I'll choose some dead space here as well just to show you what I mean by that. Now with that out of the way, let's go to our OBJ mouse, add a create event, and I'm gonna show you the three functions, and that really is all you need, the three functions that you need to get started. So the first one is going to be the layer ID. I'm gonna name it as a variable, layer ID equals layer get ID. And this is where we type in the actual name of our layer as a string. So that gets us the ID. Next, we need the tile map ID on that layer. So I'm just gonna name this as tiles and equal layer tile map get ID from the layer ID. Now with those two out of the way, all we have to do is check where we're at or where we're moving to see if we're actually colliding with that. If we are colliding with this, it's gonna return a real number which is gonna be not zero and that's how we're actually going to check. So back in our workspace, I'm gonna add a step event and all we're gonna do is just say tile map get at pixel, and then we just pass in tiles, the one that we already set up right there, and I'm gonna pass in mouse X and mouse Y. And that actually will be pretty much everything we need. If we are hitting this, then we are colliding. Now I'm gonna put this in a show debug message so that we can actually see exactly what we are colliding with. But let's run it, and now, you can see in the output down here, if I come over here, this is 99, 97, 4, 225. They all change, except it's zero when we're not actually colliding with something. And then if I come over here, these are collisions because they are empty space that we pulled in. So that's the only thing you've got to be careful of. But besides that, this is all you actually have to do to see if you are colliding with a tile. If you're enjoying this content and you like the way I teach, check out my website at letslearnthistogether.com. Game development can be hard and frustrating when you don't know how to begin or you don't have someone walking beside you. My courses are designed to alleviate all of that frustration. They are a trilogy of game maker courses to take you from beginner to expert, and I teach you how to make awesome games along the way that you'll be proud to show off to your friends and family. Check it out today at letslearnthistogether.com. So in my game, the one that's a little more complex, I have collisions based on the 
tile map get at pixel. I put in the tiles, I put in my B box right and my speed because I'm checking to the right, and then I move right next to it, make sure I'm not inside of it, and cut my speed. This is the same system for all other collision that you probably already do. You just have to use this function. It's a little more long-winded, but you also do need to do it because you have to make sure that you're, when you upgrade your X, you have to use this function again with the updated X and all of that. So it's a lot more typing, but once you get it in, it's a whole lot faster and it's more efficient when you're actually doing it. So that's it. That's really basic, simple tile collisions. Three functions and you are up and running. Now, the way to actually know which tiles you're colliding with is if you click on one, you can see down here, this brush tile 67, that is the tile number that you're on. So I've got a sign inside of here. If I put this in my game, and I wanted to say, hey, if I'm colliding with that, or if I'm in front of it and I press space bar, I want to show a message. Well, you just figure out which number it is, which is 170. And then in your game, you just say, hey, is the one I'm at, is that 170? If so, do something special. So you can have interaction with your tile maps too, which I think is really cool. But that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. Hopefully that was quick and easy and painless. Thank you so much for joining me. And as always, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.